Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it is my great pleasure to be here, um, to be here in Nan um, Nanchao with all of you. I just had to fly from London yesterday, oh. and yeah, and I haven't, you know, so it's great, great to be here. Um, the previous speeches, the speakers have made a lot of points, so really valid points. Uh, to be yourself and uh, to not to, uh, to be somebody else, that's really my turn as well. I always wanted to be a teacher in the UK because I was a teacher of science in China. Um, but I didn't know the challenge ahead of me when I chose to be a teacher in, in England and I tried to be somebody else and uh, when I'm in the science department and all of the colleagues are English and I speak English in a as a foreign language, delivering chemistry, physics, and biology to kids three, kids four, and kids five students. And it has been really challenging, not only academically but also discipline their students and their culture and so on. So how do I succeed? I try to be myself. Eventually, I found out. Only the way to succeed is to be yourself. Um, so, I'm sorry, I didn't know how to do this. Okay, so my, my talk today is about delivering and uh, developing the skills needed for 21st century. Now, I don't need to introduce myself again and again. Um, yeah, being a fully qualified teacher in England was hard, but I'm pleased I get there. And I've been teaching in a grammar school uh, for 10 years and in an independent day school, girls school, uh, for many years as well. Um, now, before I talk about the UK-China education comparison, uh, perhaps I would like to show you two short footage first. Please. In a sleepy Hampshire village, battle lines have been drawn. Five Chinese teachers have come to shake up the British education system. This place is really important. We must discipline. You don't know where. British pupils are falling behind in the international race. Our students' academic achievement is three years ahead of you. The Chinese have come to prove that even a high achieving school has a lot to learn. Yeah. <laughs> we are here to bring you the unique Chinese style kitchen. Cars and gigs. Artifacts. Everybody can get full marks. Just use your brain. Your brain. But just one week into the experiment. This is the size of a bee. Okay. Things haven't gone quite to plan. This is why you find a grown less than the Chinese students love. The Chinese way of teaching has produced a rebellion in the class. Then how would you teach here? Then I'm not. And now the Chinese teachers face an uphill battle. Baby, listen to me. To bring 50 British teenagers under control. We'll look at education, more specifically the United Kingdom versus China. Both countries were part of an extraordinary television experiment. It's called the Big Test. Hitting the Chinese way of teaching with the British approach. Who won? CCTV's Richard Bestick holds up the report card. Chinese the Chinese teaching methods came as a shock to the class of British school children, and the students' rebellious response came as a shock to a horrified British nation. I'm not doing it, is. I've never seen a student like you. As the 50-strong class of 13 and 14-year-olds showed themselves, according to Britain's normally resilient Fleet Street Press, to be disrespectful and arrogant. As the weeks passed, 
and the big test neared, relations between teachers and students mellowed, even if the academic regime was unrelenting. What is needed for photosynthesis to take place? Something. Uh, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Water. Water. And then the sunlight. Okay, you, you, you. The Chinese students were gripped by a competitive fervor. I should. Would the Chinese or British teaching system come out on top? The pressure began to tell. The English system was rigged to spot added A, but would it deliver? So what did the tale of the test tell us? Which system worked best in the cauldron of the examination hall when students who'd undergone the Chinese system were tested against those who'd continued in the English style. And if Chinese school has won the day, then that's going to be quite interesting for us, I think, at Boat Hunt. The Chinese school average mark for maths, 67.74%. Boat Hunt year 9, 54.84%. <laughs> More. Bow Hunt Year 9, average mark for Mandarin 36.46. Chinese School 46.88. For Science, Chinese School 58.33. Bow Hunt Year 9. to attempt to be gracious and say to Chinese school, very, very well done. And, you know, the inquiry will commence. Thank you very much and well done. Well done. So the Chinese system won resoundingly. Three cheers for the teachers! Hip, hip. For the students and teachers, there was time for a tearful farewell. Possibly leaving behind more questions than answers. Maybe the Chinese way of teaching, to some extent, kills the students' imagination, uh, freedom of thinking, um, critical thinking, and uh, creativity. This was far from a scientific experiment. It was reality TV designed to entertain and perhaps to inform a little. It did though get us questioning and asking which is the best system. The answer of course is perhaps a little bit of both. However, as UK teachers have already discovered, once students start questioning ideas to destruction, their first challenge is always authority itself. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's for you to decide. Richard Bestick, CCTV, London. Well, um, authority. Being a teacher in China, teachers hold authority. Teachers say and students do, but in England, you have to earn that respect. You don't get respect automatically. So that's the, the, the most challenging part for me as a teacher in England. Um, but this program has a profound impact on the British education and also on myself as well. Um, having um, broadcast this program in 2015 August, that's three series in three weeks, and it has generated a big waves of discussion in England and many, many major uh, media and newspapers about Chinese way of teaching. Um, at the time, as a science teacher myself, I do have a lot of, lots of pressure because I teach biology, chemistry and physics, whereas my counterpart, English teachers, they teach, the, there are three teachers, they teach three different disciplines, and I have to teach all of them myself, so it's one, two, three. And also, as a qualified teacher in England, I was told um, not to 
teach the way I was trained uh, in England. So that, that is the, another way. You know, I, I found it a little bit difficult because I feel like, who am I? What am I doing here? Am I being honest to myself? So at the time, it's a bit difficult for me. But um, I do know I am now representing the Chinese education, representing the, the Chinese school. So I have to do the best I can to deliver the results. So uh, three subjects I teach. Um, the, in four weeks, and whereas my counterpart, there are three teachers teach. They are smaller class, 25 students per lesson, and I have to teach 50 students per, per class. So that was really challenging, and I had lots and lots of pressure, just in case I'm thinking if I lose this game, what's going to happen to me? Because at the end of the day, I'm still a teacher of in, in England. So am I going to hold a job after this? People say, Miss Young have lost her exam results in internationally on the television. So I found that that could be a negative impact on me at the time. But whereas my Chinese colleagues, they came from China. Once they finish, they go back to China. It doesn't affect them. So it's a lot of, lot of worry to me. But um, I was really, really pleased that I have done what I can. And we have worked. And since then, the Britain has started to learn the Chinese way of teaching. One, the, well, one way is they introduce Shanghai math teachers in three waves. Each wave is 60 students, 60 teachers to England to teach English teachers how to teach math. And also we introduce Shanghai math textbooks. It's all been translated words by words, direct, just mirror translation. From English to uh, from Chinese to English, and that's all been used in the uh, primary schools. And we have uh, math hubs across the school in England, and that is the leader schools to deliver the Chinese style of math teaching. And lastly, uh, there are 41 million funding bring to the school to introduce this Chinese style teaching. And so that is the, the program's impact on British education. Um, of course, it's also had the impact on Chinese education. When I was interviewed, there were lots of lots of questions from the journalists. Now, this is just the sum of it. Now, what they say, they say, it is said that the British way of teaching is like herd sheep, whereas Chinese way of teaching, feeding ducks. What's your view on that? Number two, what do you think of the examination-oriented education and the creativity-oriented uh, education? Are they contradict to each other or not? Number three, which one do you think plays the most important role in education? Education in school, parenting at home, or the impact of social and cultural norm on young people? Um, lastly, number four, some people think that Chinese education emphasizes repetitive uh, exercise and memorization, but overlooks critical thinking and creativity. What do you think of this statement? Now, a lot of not deeper thinking and deeper uh, debate. I don't have the perfect answer to it, but I do have um, written quite a few articles that have been uh, published based on those questions. Um, what I know about is that in England, the classroom looks like this. And make, it's, it's almost like a workshop and a printed place rather than just the uh, tables and chairs. So it's, you can see it's a lot of, lot of hands-on activity is taking place in these sort of classrooms. And that's one of the teaching methodology I have to get used to at the time, although I'm not an art teacher. But I have to teach soft skills in every single lesson I deliver. Now the soft skills is, the, is what English schools emphasize on. So instead of just memorization, the team spirit, creativity, leadership, self-direction, communication, critical thinking, and so on. All this, each lesson, how you implement all these soft skills into your lesson and develop that student's skills. So that's what we're thinking about. So the students 
they walk into the math lesson, they learn these skills. They go to science lesson, they learn these skills. They go to English lesson, they learn the same skills. So everywhere you go, the students are focusing on developing those soft skills. Um, soft skills. Um, what we say that the teaching pedagogy here is to help you to develop that kind of skills, learning by doing. So we believe students learn better by hands-on, by experiencing it, by doing it. We encourage students to do group, group work, teamwork, to collaborate with each other, and we do a lot of research, a lot of uh, discussions. So lots of my science lessons, I will give them questions. Usually it's an open question, and students will have to do some research on the internet, or do some presentations. And the questions, most, a lot of them are open questions. And this is something I, as a teacher, found very difficult to adjust at the time. Because I, when I was, you know, I was Chinese, I uh, educated in China and I taught in China too, I like to have that standard answers. So each question, I'd like to have a standard answer. We call it Biaojuan what's the Biaojuan then, then, then that, that's what I'm focusing on. But when I'm in England, a lot of questions are open questions. They don't have a right or wrong answers. You say yes, you say no, you say right, you say wrong. It's all correct. You do not earn marks on this, based on this. But you do earn marks on how you justify your questions, the answers. Say, I say yes. The reason is that, 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 that you have that justification to support to the statement, to support you. Or you say no, does it make sense to you? So that's it matters. That's when the critical thinking is implemented. And I found that difficult because I'm not that uh, confident at the time. So when I throw students a question, students can give me all sorts of answers. Yes, I support it, or say no, I, I, I against it. They gave me the answers. Sometimes I found I don't really get it because they are British teenagers, the young English students. So the way they think and they, they and the reason they gave me is totally out of my comfort zone. I really don't know what they're talking about sometimes. So that was really challenging to me. So being a teacher, um, gradually I start to, you know, it's a both ways. I teach them science, but my students start to teach me the English culture, the British way of thinking, the teenagers' uh, fancy, uh, whatever they like, and it's, uh, also the parents hear me. So that's how I become a bit more British, pick up the British culture. Um, so, but this sort of teaching style can be written in Chinese translator, I would say, so so what we say is that we are not teaching somebody some fixed statement, some facts. We are teaching the students to apply that knowledge in the real world or to, to help them to learn for themselves. So that skill is what we're concentrating on. So it's not about progression, it's about, uh, not about um, it's all about progression, it's not about perfection. So we are not trying to get students to be perfect with something. We look at how this person has improved. So we are comparing this person with his history, with his past, rather than comparing this person with somebody else from his own class. So we never compare with each other, we compare that person begin with before and after. This is what we do. Um, so when we talk about here, then or just so there is a fundamental question needs to be asked: What is the purpose of education? What is education for? You would say, Why are we here? Why do we need our education? Is it trained to pass the tests, or is it trained to become creative, to have that skills to make something for your own life? And that is the fundamental question about education. And that is what you need to think about. So we most perhaps in 
Chinese education system, we may focusing on educating students to learn knowledge, the real facts. That's true. That's very good. Okay, English system now is learning Chinese way of teaching, and they do see the benefit of it. It's good, and we do a accumulation of about uh, academic knowledge, accumulation of general knowledge, culture, and leadership. But maybe we need to also, like English education, we need to look at their strength. What's their strength is the stress on the skills, not only the academic knowledge, but how we apply this knowledge in the real world. So that's the skill we all need to pick up on. So what we do is to have that critical thinking skills, to have that problem solving skills, to really have that critical eye, and individually don't think for somebody else just because she said this, he said that. Because you, you think for yourself and see whether that is work for yourself, and that is what we're looking at. And of course, in the in the uh, digital world, 21st century digital world, artificial intelligence is becoming increasingly important, replacing all the different jobs in in the, in the many many fields. We need to be literate in ICTs, and 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 we need to understand those sort of things. Of course, the social skills, learning to learn. So you need to be able to, uh, as with the previous. Um, key speaker said, you know, you need to be proactive, you need to sell yourself. Why, I, why you employ me? So if I were the boss, I have 10 people apply for this job. You convince me, why do I employ you? Why do I give you this job, but not give to the rest of the nine, but you? So how you improve, how you sell yourself? Communication skills, social skills, your confidence. So it's not only the academic schools you have earned, but also a rounded person. Uh, you, you, you have to be able to write well, speak well, and all that sort of thing. So if you say, I'm, a, I'm good at math, you also need to be good at writing, critical writing, and creative writing as well, to be able to sell yourself, and learning to learn. This is what we say. The school nowadays in 21st century is not confined in four walls. You have to learn ongoing all the time to improve yourself accordingly. So, today's students, as a teacher, we talk about today's students, they are digital learners. They are multimedia users, electronic communicators. So, as a teacher ourselves, we have to ask our questions. The question, are we preparing our students for their future or for our past? So the method we're using, that every day we're teaching students in the classroom, are we preparing for our past for those students or for their future they are going to face? So if you have that in your mind, then you've got to think about how you deliver your lesson, how you teach education, how education should be. Now, 21st century education is very different from 20, 20th century education, you can see. If, 21st, if 20s, let's say, is filling the vessel, then what we do is lighting up the fire. If you use repetitive exercise, we are discovering, discovering. Information transfer, but 21st, learning to learn. Remembering the fact, applying for the knowledge. You see the, can you see the, the the transformation, now textbook driven, this is research driven. Time based, we look at outcome based. Working in isolation, now 21st is collaboration, communication. Teachers are authorities in the past, now teachers only the facilitators. They facilitate students' learning rather than authority. Now, curriculum also. Curriculum in the past is fragmented. They so subject, 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 as if they don't, they don't have any relationship with each other. But now, all the subjects gradually will, like a jigsaw, will be mingled together, and you can see the each 
are connected with each other. So students need to be able to use all sorts of knowledge, all sorts of knowledge. So that's why have you heard of STEM? STEM, STEM, S T E M, STEM. STEM is is a is a short uh, written for S S science, T technology, E engineer, math, STEM. Now we we're becoming STEM. So and A that's art. So what we see, we see the curriculum as integrated. So we are having that student skills. They're using all sorts of skills. They learn all sorts of subjects to uh, apply in the real world. That's what it is. Now teacher centered in the past. Now student centered, and so on. Can you see? So that is the future. That is nowadays how we teach. That's what we do in England every day. So China now is is becoming increasingly becoming a global leader. So how our school and education is going to catch up with our leadership in the internationally? We need to look at that kind of teaching skills, perhaps a bit more. I know China now is doing quite a lot on that part, just like England. Is learning by introducing the Chinese math, Shanghai math to China. China is also learning from England. This is, you know, this is about. We are here to learn from each other. No education is perfect. We learn from each other. That's what it is all about. So, final bit. So, developing skills needed for 21st century. How do we do that? I would suggest to students. To understand yourself, first of all, who you are, your strength, your weakness, and what you want to become. You need to understand yourself before you really can do something with yourself. That's number one. Number two, you need to read more. Read broad, broadly. Read history books. Read geography books. Read any language, any culture books. You need to be well informed. So that you can make a well-informed judgment for yourself, and think critically for yourself to make the best choices that suit for your personal interest, your personal circumstance. Um, so, my question to you, lastly, is: Am I right to say? Am I right to say? 好成绩。就就就可以上好大学，上了好大学就有好工作，有了好工作我就有一个好收入。Am I right to say that? Is it is this all life about? Is this the end? Is that the end? So think about, can you do more with your young, vibrant life than just that? So that's my question. So. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.